All right, so this is a different edit from the previous video, and I broke it up into two segments because I felt it was a bit long, but this will continue on the rest of the benchmarking. If you like what I've been doing, a like and subscribe is appreciated. It really helps out the channel, and on with the benchmarking. All right, so this one, I've also mentioned before, I talked about uh, appending versus pre-allocating. Okay. So appending, this took about 200 microseconds, 245 for the mean. And now we have 41 microseconds, 51 microseconds for the mean, median and mean. So once again, um, I mentioned pre-allocating is definitely faster. And if you think about it, you're making this giant vector here of 10,000 elements. And then in each element, you're just changing the element to five. While in here, you're making a vector of no space and you're appending an element of five, 10,000 times. So you're making it bigger and bigger. And this is faster because it just allocates all the memory at once and then you change it one by one. While this has to, it creates this small little chunk of space and then you're making it bigger and bigger. And depending on where the architecture places that memory, it then finds that it's too big where it's at. So it has to make an even larger space. And then you're creating more elements and then it discovers like, oh my gosh, it's, it's still growing. So then it has to allocate a whole new area. And that all takes up more and more time. Now, depending on what you're doing, you may just have to do appending versus pre-allocating. And say you're recording data and you don't know how fast the data is being outputted or how much is being outputted in a given time interval. So all that is undetermined. So you really don't know how much you can pre-allocate, then you're just going to have to uh, pre-append or you're going to have to append memory as it's given. It's just going to be slower. And that's just something that, you know, you should be aware of. But if you are able to pre-alloc, pre-allocate, <laughs> Um, that is definitely preferred. So if you know your recording information, your re recording experiment, whatever you're doing, if you know how fast the values get outputted, then it's good to just make an array that's large and can handle all that. And then even you, you add an if case or something, or if you reach the end, maybe you did some bad math and it's still going to reach the end, then you pre alloc you know, you double the size again. And then the the system only has to has to make memory twice rather than here it's making memory every single time. And that's that's kind of intensive for the CPU. Okay. And now for the last script. So you can see here I have two functions and this is going into vectorizing. Now I have this f of x function where I have these two dots here. And then I have this f dot function where everything is vectorized. So every operation is, is dotified. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to go into what is faster here. So this saves running that. Okay. So you can see here, I'm first running this first f of x case where it's given this x rand of n, this massive vector, and we got this time output. Now let's look at this one over here. So now I'm running the f dot case where every operation is vectorized. And you can see here it ran a lot faster. So this is 26, 45, so let's say about 50 microseconds. This is 275. That's uh what factor three-ish. Wait, that's like way more than three. Uh, five-ish. <laughs> um, okay, so it's, it's significant. Now, if you remember from my, I think it was the basic series when I was talking about pi plot, they had a vectorized operation and I said that putting less dots was faster, which is not the case. I was misspoken when I said that, which actually really surprised me. It actually turns out running with more dots 
is the faster case. And that's because what's happening underneath is if you imagine there's this for loop that's going through this vector that you give it. And when it's doing the operation, if everything is vectorized then everything just goes into that one for loop. While here, not everything is vectorized. So it breaks up the for loop or it has to do something else. So it just causes this function to go slower. Now there is a way around it where now you see here, I'm running the F function again, but now I vectorized it from the outside. So I have this F dot of the given X variable. Okay. And you can see here, so this is 26, 45, 23, 39. That's it's about pretty much the same. So this, because it's vectorizing the entire function, the same idea. So it made that giant for loop and now it's just doing it superficially and covering all this. So this essentially becomes F dot. Now there's different reasons why you want to want to do each one. This one, I think personally looks nicer because writing out a function with all these dots is a bit cumbersome. I don't think people really want to do that. This is a bit easier to read, right? For X and you're doing this dot notation, which now because you're doing F dot, you're going to have to do this dot notation. This can just be written as a regular formula and doing this dot notation just applies for the vector. So better to vectorize as much as you can. And if you want it to still be readable, read yeah, readable, I guess it could be the word. Um, you can do the vectorization on at the top level for the function and that will speed it up. So that was something to correct one of my previous things and to point out that vectorizing is faster. So that is what I have for benchmarking. I went to these four big areas because these are the areas that a lot of people program in. There is more topics that the Julia, I forget what it's called, like optimizing page. I'm going to put the link to it in the description. But if you want to be aware of other aspects that can speed up your code, I'll put it in there and you can look at that. But this covers the main, the main things of make sure you define everything, make sure you go through a column, make sure you pre alloc when you can and make sure you vectorize. That is the end of this video. If you liked it, please give me a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.